Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. This one's going out to our pal Aaron, who's been watching our show for a very long time, and his mother, Candace, who recently passed away. We want to send our condolences to you and your family, Aaron. And Candace, this rundown is all yours. It won't be long before the Marvel and Capcom universes get back at it. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, the long-awaited new game in the crossover fighting series, will launch worldwide on September 19th. Pre-orders are available today with the usual assortment of bonuses and deluxe editions. As part of the announcement, Capcom has also revealed eight new characters for the game's main roster. They are the robotic Marvel villain Ultron, Street Fighter heroine Chun-Li, Strider from the Strider games, Resident Evil protagonist Chris Redfield, and the Marvel heroes Thor, Rocket Raccoon, Hulk, and everyone's favorite, Hawkeye. Loads of other launch characters have yet to be announced, and there will also be post-launch characters released as DLC, one of them being the Mega Man villain Sigma. He'll play a big role in the game's story. It will see Ultron and Sigma join forces to create one super powerful entity known as Ultron Sigma, which is going to make for one very formidable boss battle. We are Ultron Sigma. Fans have been waiting for years for a new Marvel vs. Capcom game, so hopefully this one will live up to the high expectations that we all have. We'll have plenty more on Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite in the coming months. What's the biggest thing you ever killed of that bad boy, huh? Over in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, one of Marvel's heroes may have revealed the title of the fourth Avengers movie a little early. With the third film, Avengers Infinity War, hitting theaters next year, Marvel has refused to reveal the final title of the planned fourth film due to hit theaters a year later. As recently as this week, Marvel boss Kevin Feige stated that the title of the fourth film is being kept a secret because it might spoil what happens in the third film, but apparently not everyone got the memo. Speaking with the BBC, Guardians of the Galaxy hero Zoe Saldana casually referred to the fourth movie as Gauntlet, meaning that it could be titled Avengers Infinity Gauntlet. Hopefully the slip-up hasn't left her feeling green, but this doesn't seem like that big of a spoiler. We could already guess that the Infinity Gauntlet would appear in the new Avengers movies, especially after its brief appearance at the end of Age of Ultron. In the comics, the Infinity Gauntlet is a powerful glove that holds the six Infinity Stones, giving whoever wears it incredible powers, essentially turning them into a god, which is obviously problematic if you're a hero trying to stop them. Kevin Feige has hinted that the events of the new Avengers movies will have big repercussions across the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe, so the films that come after it might be very different in scope and tone. Before you start worrying about all that, the latest Marvel adventure, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, arrives next week. Can we put the big ring on hold until after we survive this massive space battle? Chris Redfield will be playable in the new Marvel vs. Capcom game, but you're going to have to wait a little while longer to play as him in Resident Evil 7. Capcom has delayed the first big batch of free DLC for the survival horror game. The pack, titled Not a Hero, was slated to launch this spring and give players a new story featuring Chris Redfield, but they pushed it back and haven't named a new release window. In a surprisingly candid video, game director Koshi Nakanishi and producer Masachika Kawada said that they need more time because the DLC just wasn't good enough and they want to make sure it matches the high quality of the main game. Since they haven't named a new release window, there's no telling how long it will take before the DLC is up to snuff. In the same video, the pair add that they're also working on a second batch of new DLC, although unlike the Not A Hero content, they haven't said if this one will be free or not. The game's first two batches of DLC, known as Band Footage Volume 1 and Volume 2, cost 15 bucks and 20 bucks in Canada, so it's a nice move on Capcom's part to give players some free stuff as well. Ah! And new DLC for another big Japanese game is drawing near, or nigher. Platinum Games and Square Enix have announced that the first batch of DLC for Nier Automata will be coming to North America and Europe on May 2nd, the same day it arrives in Japan. The DLC has a very unusual title, 3C3C1D1194409270. Try saying that three times fast. It gives players three new battle coliseums where they'll take on robotic new enemies that are invading from another world, and they're not the only new enemies to fight. The DLC will also introduce two very unusual boss enemies, Square Enix CEO Yosuke Matsuda and Platinum Games CEO Kenichi Sato. I guess they're both bosses, but not the kind you usually fight in a video game. New costumes, equipment, masks, and other cosmetic items are also included in the pack. Nier Automata is easily one of the best action RPGs we've played in a long time, and we are looking forward to more. The new Kingsman movie is taking the James Bond-style action stateside. 
The first full trailer has arrived for Kingsman The Golden Circle, the sequel to the 2015 action movie. The story will see the British Kingsman headquarters destroyed, forcing the young spy Eggsy to travel to the US in order to work with the American version of the Kingsman, who go by the less monarchistic name, Statesman. It looks like there will be plenty of high-speed chases, scuba cars, bad guys with mechanical arms, and other retro spy imagery. And like the original, it will probably be unexpectedly violent. This is just the latest in a long line of collaborations between director Matthew Vaughn, his screenwriter Jane Goldman, and comic book writer Mark Miller. Kingsman The Golden Circle will hit theaters worldwide this September. The good people at Adobe want to make it easier to create immersive virtual reality worlds. The company, which is known for creating Flash, the photo editing program Photoshop, and the video editing software Premiere, is in the early stages of developing a very cool new kind of virtual reality software. In a cover story published by Variety, Adobe engineers have revealed that they're creating software that will turn flat 360-degree video into fully immersive 3D virtual reality environments that users can step into and explore. Right now, if you record 360-degree video with a spherical camera, you can turn your head in VR but can't really walk forward and step into the environments the way you can in some higher-end VR video games. The new Adobe software will automatically scan the video and map the room, creating points that then reconstruct the room in virtual space. This is great for VR developers because it will make it easier and much less expensive to create walkable virtual reality environments. Right now, the only way to do it is with very expensive camera equipment, but Adobe software would make it possible to do it with any standard 360-degree spherical camera. The software is still in the early stages of development, so it probably won't be available for a while. Don't expect to see any more changes made to the original Star Wars trilogy. Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy has revealed that she and Disney have no plans to make future alterations to the films. Creator George Lucas famously tinkered with the movies many times, adding pointless CGI enhancements, unnecessary extra scenes, and some downright silly changes like Greedo shooting at Han Solo and Darth Vader screaming NO at the end of Return of the Jedi. Kennedy recently spoke with a Star Wars fan podcast, Steel Wars, and when asked about the possibility of making any new changes to the films, she replied that she would never mess with them. This means that the 2011 Blu-ray editions, which were the last time Lucas tinkered with the films before selling them to Disney, will be the final versions going forward. But what does that mean for the original unaltered versions of the movies? Several websites have been reporting that Kennedy's statements rule out the possibility of the original films ever being released, but if you listen to the actual podcast, that isn't necessarily what she's saying. Not messing with the films doesn't rule out the possibility of the original unmessed with versions ever being released, and there's no reason why Disney wouldn't be able to do it now that they own the franchise outright. I guess we'll just have to keep waiting. We're big fans of the original unaltered films and film preservation in general, so you know we'll keep you up to date with the latest on the matter. <laughs> That's our rundown for today. Thank you so much for watching. You know we're gonna be back tomorrow with a brand new episode. In the meantime, watch a billion other videos that we have on our channel. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching.